Welcome to our mat. Today I'm doing a series of videos on an exam review that I gave several years ago. On this page, I'm doing mostly linear programming. So this says minimize this problem. This is one of my favorite um, pages of the whole exam. So let's just get to it. So it says minimize according to these constraints. This is a sketch. So we're going to sketch the first quadrant. We know it's the first quadrant because this right here says x and y have to be positive. We're going to take this 3x plus 4y and we're going to say equals 240. And we're just going to um, look at the intercepts. So when we look at the intercepts, we're going to say, hey, what happens when x is 0? So if 4y is 0, then y is equal, well, we divide both sides by 4, and y is equal to 60. And then we're going to say, well, what happens when y is 0? Well, if y is 0, then 3x is equal to 240, and x is equal to 80. So these are just intercepts. We are going to do the exact same thing with the second equation. So we're going to take um, 6x plus 4y equals 360, and we're going to say, well, if x is 0, 4y is equal to 360, and y is equal to 90, and if y is 0, then 6x is equal to 60, and we divide both sides by 6, and x is equal to 60. All right, so these are intercepts. So the x-intercepts, and this is not to scale at all. x is 60 and 80, and the y-intercepts are 60 and 90. So this is just my basic setup. And then in the first line, the 60 and the 80 are connected to each other. That's one line. And in the next one, the 60 and the 90 are connected to each other. And then I'm going to test the origin. Is 0 greater than or equal to 240? That is not true. So we don't go towards the origin. We go away. Um, and then we test the next one. Is 0 greater than or equal to 360? That is also not true. So we go away. And we know we're in the first quadrant, which means we are shading this area. Now, the thing about linear programming, it says the minimum, or if we're shading one of these other areas, the maximum, or the minimum, or whatever, we could be minimizing or maximum any of these areas. The minimum or maximum of this 5x plus 3y is going to happen either here, here, or here. There's an infinite number of points. This goes forever, but we will minimize at one of those three points, either at 0, 90, 80, 0, or at this point, which we don't know yet. So we do need to figure out that one unknown point. To figure that out, well, the y's have the same coefficient. So I'm going to, going to write out that 6x plus 4y equals 360. And then I'm going to multiply that top equation through by negative 1 to get negative 3x minus 4y equals negative 240. And I'm going to add down to get 3x equals 120, divide by 3, and x is equal to 40. I'm going to put that 40 into the second equation. Um, so, or into the first equation to figure out y. So I'm going to say 3 times 40 plus 4y equals 240. 120 plus 4y equals 240. Subtract 120. 4y equals 120. Divide by 4. y is equal to 30. And then I'm going to say, so I want this point right here to be 40, 30. But then I'm going to test. I'm going to check. Is 6 with the second equation? So I substituted it into the first. I'll test with the second. Is 6 times 40 uh, plus 4 times 30 really equal to 360? So 240 plus 120, yes. Okay, so I now have three points to figure out the minimum. I test each of these three corners of the feasible region with this equation. 
So I test 0, 90. With z equals 5 times 0 plus 3 times 90, and I get 270. I test 40, 30. Z equals 5 times 40 plus 3 times 30, and I get 290. I test 80, 0. Z equals 5 times 80 plus 3 times 0, and I get 400. And the minimum is right here. So the minimum is Z equals 270 at 0, 90. So that's my answer. All right. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Oh, wait, I'm not done with the video. I'm so used to one problem at a time. There's one more linear programming on here. Hoofta. One page at a time. I'm not used to doing two problems. Okay. Set up the following problem. Do not solve. Do not solve. Do not solve. It reads like you need to solve, but that's because it's a full problem. Set up. A company sells two types of shoes. The first uses two units of leather, two units of synthetic material, and yields a profit of $8 per pair. The second requires five units of leather, one unit of synthetic material, and gives a profit of $10 per pair. If there are 40 units of leather and 16 units of synthetic material, how many pairs of each type of shoe up? PF, ha, of shoe should the manufacturer, should be manufactured to profit, maximize profit. Okay, I'm going to say X is shoe A and Y is shoe B. So we have X and we have Y. And we have leather and synthetic material. So leather. We have synthetic. So for shoe A, it uses two units of leather and two units of synthetic. And the second type uses five units of leather and one unit of synthetic. And we see here that the limit on leather is 40. So all of this has to be less than or equal to 40. And the limit, limit on synthetic is 16. So all of this has to be less than or equal to 16. But if you remember up here, we were in the first quadrant because of the X and Y are less than or equal to zero. And that's really important because you can't have negative um, amounts of items. So we need to add that here. Those are our logicals. Logically, X leather has to be greater than or equal to zero and the synthetic has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's really important to add into your list of equations. And then last is our profit. And our profit says that you get $8 per pair of leather plus $10 per pair for synthetic. And we're done. That's it. System set up. Nothing else needs to be done. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, there are two more pages of this test, so there are two more videos on what's going on. One is on gastrointestinal elimination and one is on inverse of matrices. I hope to see you in the next video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I have a good day. Thanks.